Hello everybody and welcome to Celix's webinar on V98 and the TDL Plus Biochips. My name is Dmitry Kashanin. I'm glad you can join us today. Today I'm going to start with introduction of Celix's V98 and the TDL Plus Biochips and then we'll give you a detailed uh, overview of how to use the V98 and the TDL Plus Biochips with uh, two examples of application of the biochips. And I will finish with a quick summary of biochip products. Celix's Vinoflux platform provides completely integrated solution uh, which mimics physiological flow and shear stress environment of microcapillaries, venules, and arteries. Uh, similar to intravital microscopy, it can visualize interaction of cells uh, with the extracellular matrix and uh, with endothelial cells, and uh, therefore you can observe cell rolling, cell adhesion under shear stress, which can be subsequently analyzed. It is a functional assay where activation of cell receptors can be observed and uh, quantified. The heart of the system is uh, biochips, and today I'm going to introduce you the Vena 8 and the TVL Plus biochips. Uh, uh, with the aid of Vena 8 and the TVL Plus biochips, you can culture uh, and the TVL cells inside the microcapillaries and subsequently run the flow experiment, uh, uh, observing the interaction of leukocytes or platelets with endothelial cells. The biochip has a following design. It has eight micro channels which run in parallel, and the dimension of the channels is 800 micrometers wide and 120 micrometers deep. Uh, the design of the of the port of the biochip is as follows: it has a micro well which can hold up to 100 microliter of cell sample, which leads. Uh, to the microchannel through the port seal, which can be easily sealed against a standard gauge needle. Uh, the, bias, the base of the biochip is two millimeters, and then it's covered with uh, a cover slip of 0.5 uh, millimeters thick. When looking at the culturing uh, cells inside the microchannel, there are several challenges uh, which one um, ex ex actually can, can observe. First of all, it's quite difficult to see the cells uniformly. And uh, cells typically grow in inside the defined space and small dimensions of the microchannels. Typically, it is necessary to perfuse cell for quite a long time to to actually keep the uh, natural microenvironment of cells. Typically what is required for the flow assays uh, is to obtain the uniform layer of endothelial cells, allow the pretreatment of cells with different compounds like TNF, alpha, interferon gamma, etc and also pretreatment of cells with high shear stress. Um, also, a system needs to be uh, easy to use and allow multiple experiments uh, to be run at the same time. This is uh, the challenges and requirements uh, we addressed and uh, came up with a new biochip design, which is v and the Tilo Plus biochip. It requires a very low cell number for seeding. It's quite easy to use. The cells can be introduced easily inside the biochip and form the confluent layer over several hours. You also can do the pretreatment of cells with compounds or with the flow. As many of our biochips, it can be used with bright field phase and fluorescent microscopy and the high magnification from 40 to 60 X. You can use it with variety of cell suspensions from leukocyte platelets or running whole blood assays. And it's completely transparent plastic, which allows uh, high quality microscopy observations. 
In applications of biochips, it's uh, obviously the interaction of cell to cell, cell adhesion and cell rolling. You can look at for different stain in nuclei or fil uh, filaments. The application extends from inflammation, cardiovascular, respiratory, uh, to oncology, uh, where we look at melanomas and metastasis. I'll give you two examples of uh, adhesion assays which you can run on the endothelial plus biochips. A silicocyte adhesion assay using Myers nanofound. You can uh, have different channel coatings and you can grow different endothelial cells. The cells uh, leukocytes to use is THP1, PVMCs, or neutrophils. Typical shear stress from 0.5 to 2 times per square centimeter. If you run the leukocyte at the shear stress, you will be using from 8 to 32 microliters of um, cell sample per minute. In thrombosis assay, the shear stress is so much higher. In this case, you're going to be using shear stress from 22 to 220 lines per square centimeter and uh, volume per minute from 160 microliters to 1.6 milliliters per minute. Um, here's how you can uh, introduce the cells uh, and the cellular cells inside the, the biochip. First, you need to coat the biochip with uh, extracellular matrix, fibronectin, melanin, and typically introducing 12 microliters of uh, melanin inside each channel of the biochip. This is then stored overnight at 4 degrees in humidified conditions. Following that, the cell suspension of endothelial cells at 15 million per mil to uh, successfully seed the cells. Following the seeding, the cells uh, allowed to uh, firmly adhere to the uh, to laminin within 20 minutes inside the conventional incubator. Then it is required to top up the wells of the biochip with uh, 40 microliters of media each size. And following uh, that, this, uh, the biochip is placed inside the incubator for two hours to, to allow the cell proliferation and um, to allow the cells to form confident layers. This is how it looks actually after um, two hours of uh, cell seeding and cell proliferation. This is images of four different separate channels inside the biochip, showing the confident layer of uh, primary helix. To perfuse the leukocytes through the uh, lina 8 and the cereal plus uh, biochip, we recommend to use Myers uh, nano pump. It's ultra precision pump, which allows to generate shear stress from very low 0 0.05 times per square centimeter to really high up to 1,000 times per square centimeter. It precisely controls the flow, and it also allows up to eight. Uh, parallel perfusions using multi-flow 8. The shear stress is uh, extremely ac accurate and pump is fully uh, computer control. It runs uh, via Vinoflux assay software. The pump is provided with eight-way uh, cable connector. So this is the pump, the cable which attaches subsequently to the biochip. To run the assay, you insert the cable into the biochip and wash any excess of the um, extracellular matrix or any unbound cells from the biochip by pushing uh, buffers through. Then, with a standard pipette or with a robotic dispenser, one can dispose the waste from the wells and place the leukocyte or platelet sample into the wells. The last step is to apply shear stress by pulling the sample from the wells and observe the interaction of uh, leukocytes with endothelial cells. This is done 
record that using the motorized page and the um, digital camera. The blind shift can also be used uh, with uh, conventional syringe pumps from Harvard apparatus for precision instruments or KD scientific. And to use it with conventional pump, uh, you require to have a connector, special connector, which has a single pin on one side and the lure connector on the other side, so it fits into a standard syringe or syringe from your syringe pump. If this cable is not long enough, we provide the extension, which can extend it up to 50 centimeters long. To run the floor assay on, on, in a single channel, you wet the tip of the single-way connector, then insert it into a biochip and wash any excess of unbound cells or extracellular matrix. By and the sample is placed in the same well. The last step is then to apply shear stress and to pull the sample through the biochip. At this stage, the interaction of leukocytes within the TL cells is observed. I'll give you two examples of um, applications of Renate and the TL plus biochip. First one is the um, leukocyte adhesion assay. In this case, we use THP1 monocytic cell line for adhesion assays. And we looked at an unstimulated primary CUX and also TNF alpha stimulated primary CUX. The shear stress was set at 0.5 times per square centimeter. And we perfused for five minutes um, THP1 cells at 2 million. Uh, cells per milliliter concentration. Here you can see the difference. This is unstimulated cells. There's no cell adhesion, practically none. And here is the uh, the image where the cells are stimulated to express the adhesion molecules and selectins. So this is the quantification of this. Um, experiment showing the variation of the experiment on eight, uh, five different biochips. So in this case, on each biochip, all eight channels were coated with the same cells. And uh, we typically record five images per, per channel. So on average, we get 100 cells with variation only 4%. Another example, it, it, using the endothelial plus biochip in cancer cells in organs. So in this case, we looked at uh, melanoma cells, uh, melanoma cell, different melanoma cell lines, MLST, MLSTR, and also compared the cells with highly invasive um, lung cancer cells, the cell line 12 or 5 for you. And as you can see from images, the, obviously the lung cancer cells uh, results in higher adhesion. But we can also profile the differences between different melanoma cell lines. So in this case, for MLST, we got in around 60 cells adhered per field of view, and MLSTR results in a lower adhesion. Um, as expected, the cancer cell, the lung cancer cells, uh, results in the highest achievement because of the highly invasiveness of of the cell line. A physiologically relevant, they mimic in vivo shear flow environment, uh, unlike any other assays. It's also robust and easy to use. It's quite easy to coat the biochips with proteins or grow the endothelial cells and they are affordable and see it you need. This is also a flexible solution. You can use whole blood, a range of uh, different cell suspensions, and it can be applied in a variety of disease areas. Thank you for your attention.